You need to check that. Still, you can't hear it? Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. And give me a thumbs up when when it comes through. Give me a thumbs up when it comes through. Can you hear me now? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and yes, even foes, in the family. Uh, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, with the White House Daily Devotional Bible Reading, episode number 276, where I simply read three chapters of the Holy Bible in the Old King James Version each day with my family as a part of our family devotions to encourage you to read the Holy Bible in a year's time <clears throat> with your family. That means, yes, that you ought to peel off from us and go read the Bible together with your family. However, if you are single and you're struggling to pray and read the Bible in the morning, grab hold of this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, and uh, we will count you as an honorary White House family member. Today we are reading 2 Kings chapter 8, 2 Kings chapter 9, and Job chapter 34. Dr. R.A. Torrey said, Do not study commentaries. Lesson helps. This includes a handful of purpose helps. Some of you don't know what that is, but all of the preachers know what I'm talking about. Or other books about the Bible. Make sure you study the Bible. He's not condemning these helps and commentaries, uh, but he wants you to make sure you focus on studying the Bible with the commentaries and helps, but they are side things. accessories, if you will. Do not study about the Bible. Study the Bible. Study the Bible itself. Do not study about the Bible. Study the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God, and only the Bible is the Word of God. St. Augustine said, Let us therefore yield ourselves and bow to the authority of the Holy Scriptures, which can neither err nor deceive. And ladies and gentlemen, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure of reading in your hearing today the Word of God found in Second Kings chapter 8. And then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life 
saying, Arise and go thou in thine household and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God, and she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines, and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha hath done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all, restore all that was hers, and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. And Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syrians, was sick, and it was told him, saying, The man of God is come hither. And the king said unto Hazael, Take a present in thine hand, and go. Meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? So Hazael went to meet him, and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, forty camels, burden, and came and stood before him, and said, Thy son Benhadad, king of Syria, hath sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? And Elisha said unto him, Go, say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover. Howbeit, the Lord hath showed me that he shall surely die. And he settled his countenance, and he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed, and the man of God wept. And Hazael said, Why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds wilt thou set on fire, and their young men wilt thou slay with the sword, and wilt dash their children, and rip up their women with child. And Hazael said, But what is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord hath showed me that thou shalt be king over Syria. So he departed from Elisha and came to his master, who said to him, What said Elisha to thee? And he answered, He told me that thou shouldest surely recover. And it came to pass on the morrow that he took a thick cloth 
and dipped it in water and spread it on his face so that he died. And Hazael reigned in his stead. And in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah, and Jehoram the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as did the house of Ahab. For the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah for David his servant's sake, as he promised him to give him alway a light and uh, to his children. And or rather, in his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. So Joram went over to Zaire and all the chariots with him, and he rose by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him about, and the captains of the chariots, and the people fled into their tents. Yet Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. And the rest of the acts of Joram and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Joram slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. In the twelfth year of Joram, and son, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, did Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, begin, begin to reign. <clears throat> Two and twenty years old was uh, Hosiah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Amri, king of Israel. And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Ahab for he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. And he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to the war against Hazael, king of Syria, in Ramoth-Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Joram. And king Joram went back to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah, when he found, or rather when he fought against Hazael king of Syria, and Ahaziah the son of Jehoram king of Judah, went down to see Joram the son of Ahab in Jezreel, because he was sick. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and indeed the great pleasure uh, to read in your hearing the Word of God found in 2 Kings chapter 9.
Second Kings chapter 9. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thine hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, Look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshai, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed the king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. Pardon me. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. Give that to him so he can brighten that. And when he came, 100%. And when he came, behold, the captain. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting, and he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu had a rather and Jehu said unto which of all of us and he said to thee O captain and he arose over here 100% 100% brightness if you don't right here if you don't know how to do it give it to him And he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahijah. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye know the man and his communication. And they said, It is false. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then they hasted, and took every man his garment, and put it under him on the top of the stairs, and blew with trumpets, saying, Jehu is king. So Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshai, 
conspired against Joram. Now Joram had kept Ramoth Gilead. He and all Israel became because of Hazael, king of Syria. But King Joram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. And Jehu said, If it be your minds, then let none go forth nor escape out of the city to go to tell it in Jezreel. So Jehu rode in a, char in a chariot and went to Jezreel for Joram lay there. And Ahaziah king of Judah was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel and he spied the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take an horseman and send to meet them. And let him say, Is it peace? So there went one on horseback to meet him and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace turn thee behind me turn thee behind me and the watchman told saying the messenger came to them but he cometh not again then he sent out a second on horseback which came to them and said thus saith the king is it peace and jehu answered what hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshai, for he driveth furiously. And Joram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready, and Joram king of Israel, and Ahaziah king of Judah, went out each in his chariot. And they went out against Jehu, and met him in the portion of Naboth the Jezreelite. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. And Joram turned his hands and fled and said to Ahaziah, There is treachery, O Ahaziah. And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote Jehoram between his arms and the arrow went out at his heart and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Jehu to Bidkar, his captain, take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth the Jezreelite for remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father the Lord laid this burden upon him surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons saith the Lord and I will requite thee in this Plat, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground, according to the word of the Lord. But when Ahaziah the king of Judah saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house, and Jehu followed after him. 
and said, Smite him also in the chariot. And they did so at the going up to Ger, which is by Iblium. And he fled to Megiddo and died there. And uh, his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in his sepulchre with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, began Ahaziah to reign over Judah. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head. <coughs> uh, pardon me. And looked out at a window. <coughs> And as Jehu entered in at the gate, he said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses. And he trolled her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, go see now this cursed woman and bury her. For she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel, shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. And the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. Ladies and gentlemen, Brothers and sisters in Christ, I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure indeed to read now in your hearing the word of God found at Job 34. <clears throat> Job chapter 34. Furthermore, Elihu answered and said, Hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, ye that have knowledge. For the ear trieth words, as the mouth tasteth meat. Let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job hath said, I am righteous, and God hath taken away my judgment. 
Should I lie against my right, my wound is incurable without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water, which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity, and walketh with wicked men? For he hath said, It profiteth, it profiteth a man nothing, that he should delight himself, himself with God. Therefore hearken unto me, ye men of understanding. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yea, surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. Who hath given him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world? If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. If now thou hast understanding, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hateth right govern? And wilt thou condemn him that is most just? Is it fit to say to a king, Thou art wicked, and to princes, ye are ungodly? How much less to him that accept, accepteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor? for they all are the work of his hands. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings, there is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he will not lay upon man more than right that he should enter into judgment with God. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. Therefore he knoweth their works, and he overturneth them in the night, so that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked, men in the open sight of others, because they turned back from him, and would not consider any of his ways so that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him, whether it be done against a nation or against a man only? that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. That which I see not teach thou me, if I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should it be according to thy mind, 
he will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose, and not I. Therefore speak what thou knowest. Let men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. Job hath spoken without knowledge, and his words were without wisdom. My desire is that Job may be tried unto the end because of his answers for wicked men. For he addeth rebellion unto his sin, he clappeth his hands among us and multiplieth his words against God. Shall we pray? Holy Father God, we thank you for the privilege, the honor, and the pleasure and blessing to read your holy word. And Lord, have it to arrest our hearts. Have your holy word to find a lodging place in our hearts, in minds, souls, and spirits. And help us not to fill our minds with the world and all of the evil and wickedness in it. Help us to meditate on your holy word throughout this day. And have your holy word to crush like a hammer uh, our wicked hearts and hard necks and stubbornness, pride, and disobedience, rebelliousness, and foolishness. And help us all who call ourselves Christians to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face to turn from our wicked ways and to repent and get back to you, our first love, Lord Jesus, and help us to get back to our first works. In Jesus Christ's name, I do pray and forsake. Amen. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and even foes in the family. Uh, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International, with the Scripture and the Sense podcast episode number 612, where I simply read the Word of God and give the sense of it based on an authoritative commentary source, such as the Bible Knowledge Commentary of Dallas Theological Seminary uh, and or the Matthew Henry Commentary or some other great commentary, reputable commentary or study Bible. This podcast is based upon Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8, where it says, Ezra and the Levites read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So therefore, the aim and purpose of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the Word of God and the giving of the sense of it or the understanding of it, it is my, my humble prayer that the church, God's church, would be revived and that the world would be awakened and saved from the wrath to come and from the eternal burning hell. 
Ladies and gentlemen, today we are reading Micah, chapter 6, verse 6. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. Lord, fill us with that anointing that your servant John talked about. Uh, that requires that uh, that uh, says rather that no man need teach us because your Holy Spirit will uh, give us the anointing uh, to understand your holy word. And we thank you for the gifts to your church at the same time, teachers of your holy word who are called and given to uh, digging deep into your holy word and helping others to understand it better but we depend upon your Holy Spirit even to grasp that uh, and to discern, help us to discern whether what the commentators uh, said is true so Holy Father God fill us with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word and most of all help us to love it to cherish it to apply it to our lives to obey it to live by it and to share it with others and to witness to others the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Ladies and gentlemen, I just read in your hearing Micah chapter 6, verse 6. Now here is the sense of it. Here is the understanding of it. First, uh, from a devotional standpoint, the Matthew Henry commentary reads, the people are called upon to declare why they were weary of God's worship and prone to idolatry. Sin causes the controversy between God and man. Allow me to repeat that. Sin causes the controversy or the problem between God and man. God reasons with us to teach us to reason with ourselves to teach us to reason with ourselves God reasons with us I want to repeat that to teach us to reason with ourselves that's deep God reasons with us to teach us to reason with ourselves to judge ourselves is what he's saying. Let them remember God's many favors to them and uh, their fathers and compare with them their unworthy, ungrateful conduct toward him. Uh, now, from the Bible Knowledge Commentary. Speaking for the nation, Micah asked, what he must take before the Lord in worship to regain his good favor. And favor is very important in this life. Micah asked if he should approach the Lord with burnt offerings. Should he go with calves ready to be sacrificed? By these questions, the prophet was not downplaying the importance of the sacrificial system. The Lord has set up the Levitical system to provide, among other things, atonement for the people's sin. Micah, as a righteous member of the covenant community, was no doubt involved in the sacrificial system. He knew, however, that the sacrifices were meant to be outward expressions of inner trust and dependence on God for his grace and his mercy. But our hearts, 
the hearts of the people need to be right with God before they make the offering is what he was getting at. Let's pray. Holy Father God, to help us to leave the offering at the altar until we get our hearts right with you as your people. Help us to truly humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, and to repent and to get back to you our first love. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. and brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and even foes in the family. This is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the White House family devotional reading of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's fantastic devotional work and book titled Morning and Evening. This is the podcast and this is episode number 222. Our scripture passage uh, today uh, for our scripture reading is first Samuel chapter 18 verse 17 and Saul said to David behold my elder daughter Merab her will I give thee to wife only be thou valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles For Saul said, Let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. The sacramental host of God's elect is warring still on earth, Jesus Christ being the captain of their salvation. He has said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Hark to the shouts of war. Now let the people of God stand fast in their ranks, and let no man's heart fail him. It is true that just now in England the battle is turned against us, and unless the Lord Jesus shall lift his sword, we know not what may become of the Church of God in this land. But let us be of good courage and play the man. There never was a day when Protestantism seemed to tremble more in the scales than now that a fierce effort is making to restore the Romish Antichrist to his ancient seat. We greatly want a bold voice and a strong hand to preach and publish the old gospel for which martyrs bled and confessors died. The Savior is by His Spirit still on earth. Let this cheer us. 
He is ever in the midst of the fight, and therefore the battle is not doubtful. And as the conflict rages, what a sweet satisfaction it is to know that the Lord Jesus, in his office as our great intercessor, is prevalently, prevalently rather pleading for his people. O oh, anxious gazer, look not so much at the battle below, for there thou shalt be enshrouded in smoke and amazed with garments rolled in blood. But lift thine eyes yonder where the Savior lives and pleads, for while he intercedes, the cause of God is safe. Let us fight as if it all depended upon us, but let us look up and know that all depends upon him. Now by the lilies of Christian purity and by the roses of the Savior's atonement, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, we charge you who are lovers of Jesus to do valiantly in the holy war for truth and righteousness, for the kingdom and crown jewels of your master. Onward for the battle is not yours, but God and May I add this morning, kingdom forever. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you for being with us in the battle. And not only being with us, but leading us. So, Lord, help us to sing that old song in our hearts, Onward, Christian Soldiers. And uh, as your servant Spurgeon expounded upon your holy word, help us to be valiant in battle, as David was. For your glory, praise, and honor. For your kingdom's sake. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Praise God, more blessed flow here more creatures here below. Praise Him, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord is leading me to go into the standing between the living and the dead service part two. And uh, by way of encouraging you to have personal devotions, I'm talking to people who are believers in Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, you have no clue what the personal devotions are or family devotions, I would imagine, unless you were raised in a Christian home, but you never became a Christian. By way of encouraging you to keep your family together, 
through prayer, not through evil and sin and foolishness and rebelliousness and stubbornness and evil and wickedness. That's not the way to keep your family together. You keep your family together with God's help through prayer. So with that, Jonathan Edwards said, family education and order are some of the chief means of grace. If these are duly maintained, all of the means of grace are likely to prosper and become effectual in your family. May I remind you, we used to see this bumper sticker back in the 70s. There's two bumper stickers we used to see back in the 70s. Even when I was lost and on my way to hell, they didn't mean anything to me at all. Uh, I mean, I, I, in fact, I only remember them now because I am saved. One was the family that prays together stays together. That meant absolutely nothing to me at all. It didn't. I know my family didn't do it. And it had some praying hands on the bumper sticker. The other bumper sticker was, God is my co-pilot. Even when I was lost and on my way to hell, I said, that can't be. How can you be the co-pilot with God? And you're a mere human being and a wicked human being at that. So uh, and then somebody rebuked that bumper sticker and scratched out co and said, God is my pilot. I said, okay, that makes sense to me. But I have a new uh, take on that first one. The family that prays together and obeys together stays together. It's not just prayer. See, this is the reason why prayer does not work in your family, because you're not obeying God. In fact, I believe God wants you to obey him first. Pray for help to obey him. But the main thing God wants you to do is to obey him you know really truly and if you're not obeying God in the family the husband is not obeying God if the wife is not obeying God if the father is not obeying God if the mother is not obeying God if the children are not obeying God you're going to have trouble and problems and issues in your family that's just the bottom line there's no getting around it so let's pray for the family holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will help every family to pray together, obey together, and stay together. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. And Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would save those families that don't know you as Savior and raise up laborers into the field to witness to those families that do not know you as Savior because they have never heard the gospel. Forgive us of our sins in the church of not witnessing as we should. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us to pass out some gospel uh, pamphlets and tracts this morning. Bless and anoint them. Move upon the hearts of the people to come to know you as Savior. In Jesus Christ's name, I do pray and for sake. Amen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, please join me in reciting or reading the new Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Everybody should be saying it out loud. Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of the same essence as the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, he bled, he died, and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the Holy Scriptures. He was seen alive by Mary Magdalene and the other women. The disciples and over 500 other brethren. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. Can somebody say amen? We're at verse 33. We did this on yesterday, but we're doing it again today. Nevertheless, that's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. You want peace in your home? You want joy and love and order in your home? And even if you don't have all of the peace you want, you want love, joy, and order in your home? You need to do it God's way. You may not have peace all of the time because you may have a devil in your family. You may have a Judas in your family, always keeping up some mess. But you can have peace and joy in your soul and in your spirit. Those of you who are saved and born again and obedient to God. And if you're obeying God, if you're praying to God without ceasing like you're supposed to, and you are obeying God, and then... Uh, the family can stay together and thrive together and uh, uh, accomplish things together for the glory of God and for the kingdom of God. So verse 33 between the, this is to the husband and the wife, husbands and wives. You can put your marriage book down trying to figure out marriage. They don't know. Just just listen to the word of God. Obey the word of God. Verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in part. Talking to husbands. So love his wife even as himself. One of the things that made Oswald Cha Chambers famous is he understood that you need God to help you do everything for God and for his glory but you do have a will and if you're saved you can make that will do what you ought to do whether you feel like it or not so it is a lie out of hell to claim to be a Christian and husbands I just don't love her anymore no, no it's a lie I mean, if you're saved now if you're lost and on your way to hell then of course you don't have you can't you choose not to do it you're not going to do it and you want to head to the divorce court because you hate her now. The one you you loved so much at one time, you gave her your name and you married her and you got on one knee and proposed to her. 
spent thousands of dollars on a wedding, on a limousine, all of that honeymoon. You 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 forsook all others and married her, but now you hate her. I I don't love. Her. I don't I don't I don't. BB uh, King said it best. The thrill is gone, baby. But God said, uh, God never said to you the thrill is gone. He still loves you. So I, I want you to understand, see, what I'm trying to get you to understand, and I know we're going to have some devils to say, oh, this is legalism. No. You need to choose to love your wife. And you may have to choose every day to love her husbands. And she may be unlovable. You might have a Jezebel as a wife. Whatever the case you married her, and the family that prays together and obeys together stays together. Divorce is not an option, not in God's sight, and it should not be an option in your sight. Even the older, older people who were lost never even claimed religion or faith. They understood that, and they stayed together. They made it work. See, there's some things, listen to me very carefully, my beloved. There's some things, I don't care how you feel about it. See, you're so caught up in your feelings and your emotions. That's what's wrong with uh, America today. That's what's wrong with our society. That's why you can't take nothing. That's why you don't have any discipline. That's why you can't handle nothing. I know that's bad English. I know that's a double negative, but I, I just want to say it like that because I can get it across to you better. You can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. You can't handle nothing. You're all caught up in your emotions and your feelings. Oh, he, he doesn't do it for me anymore. She doesn't do it for me anymore. I met somebody else. No, you have to you, you got you got to understand, man. See, this is what made Oswald Chambers article famous in that book, My Utmost for His Highest. At some point in your life as a Christian, I'm not talking to lost people right now. You got to make up your mind that you're going to obey God. Come hell or high water. And you're going to say, my, I'm going to give my utmost for his highest, for the glory and praise and honor of God. In Jesus Christ and for the kingdom. May I say it again. Kingdom forever. I say that remembering Chadwick Boseman. It's not. The fictitious town. Forever but the kingdom forever. And ever since that movie, that's what my baby daughter and I have said to each other. Every day we go out and pass out gospel tracts. If she's not with me, she reminds me to do so, to make sure we do so. When she's with me, she reminds me. And others in the family remind me. And we text each other to remind each other. And when I text her back and say, thank you, Danielle, for reminding me. We, pass, we did pass out the gospel tracts. At the end of that text, we always say kingdom forever. That's our thing. Without fail. And then she says, thank you, Papa. Uh, she, she'll, she'll say, okay, Papa, thank you, or something like that. And then she'll end hers with kingdom forever. And we capitalize that. It's not a black thing, a white thing, red thing, the other thing. It's kingdom, kingdom, kingdom forever. That's the cross. So every time we pass our gospel tracts, that's what we do. And by the way, all that matters today seem to be a good man, seem, seem to have acted like a Christian man. I hope he was a born-again Christian. 
Because all that matters right now today is not the fact that he's dead. It's where is he? Heaven or hell? I know some of you don't want to hear that, but that's the that's the deal. That's the situation. Okay, that's all that matters today. It doesn't matter how many movies he made. He was a gifted actor. He was all that. And uh, uh, evidently a strong man, a strong black man. There, there are very few strong men who could do that, what he did. He fought that battle by himself. You know, his family knew about it. But he didn't. he didn't go out and try to get sympathy from people and... Uh, you know, and try to get this and that and people, you know, making people feel sorry for him. He didn't do that. He was not that kind of man. He was not from that kind of stock like so many people are today. He's not. He's from, he's from South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? He's, <laughs> he's from the South. They don't, you know, the men down there, they don't, they don't do that. You know. Uh, so hopefully the man was saved. And he was a brother. Because all that matters now is whether or not he's in heaven with Jesus or in hell. So let's get back to this verse. Husbands, love your wife. It's a choice. She, she, does, no, she doesn't look like she used to at all. You have learned that her breath stinks too. When, if she doesn't take care of that problem. You have learned that she has a bathroom odor as well. You have learned that she didn't, she doesn't look the way every day when you first saw her, and she had makeup on and all that. Now you see her with no makeup, with a green mask on her face, and rollers in her hair. And, and you want to say, like that uh, Olympic uh, mascot? What is it? What, what, what? Yeah. And she'll have the boldness to come into the room and want love and romance. And you say, what? What is it? What? God still wants you to love her. That's what God wants you to do. Nevertheless, 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 let every one of you in particular, husbands, love your Wife, love his wife, even as himself. And love is not always letting her have her way and letting her do what she wants. That's not that's not love. See, and and let me just say this, and I know that he's going to get mad at me and probably want to sue me and all of that. But I I I I thank God for Liberty University. I do. It's first class operation. I don't know what. To, possess them other than the devil to do what they did and everybody and I'm saying this right now everybody who knew an inkling of it ought to resign everybody who knew anything about it at all ought to resign and they didn't do anything to stop it they ought to resign too including board members vice presidents because me thinks that that kind of action, that kind of demonic spirit, just from his wife alone, is normally normally known. Because that's an uncontrollable kind of a demonic spirit thing. That's very few people can control that and hide that kind of evil. The husband probably was able to do so, but not so with the wife. Not, not with some of the things she's being accused of. And by the way, let me say, if it was just him doing what she did, she would be in jail. Uh, he would be in jail. He would be in handcuffs. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. Because... Uh, the next foot is dropping. Okay? He would be in jail. If it, if it was the man, he would be in jail. See, this is our wicked society. This is what we do. 
if 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 Jerry Falwell Jr. was accused of what she did, I'm talking about some of this other stuff, they would be investigating him. The FBI would be all over the place. But because it's the wife, the woman, nobody says anything. See, that's how hypocritical you people are. But if he had done it, buddy, the FBI, the CIA, the ABC, and everybody, and their mama will be investigating that situation, buddy. You can best believe that. But because it's the wife, hands off. But I tried to tell you all, there's some evil Jezebels in this world and in the church. And they are out of control. And the main thing I want to tell you, this is an example of a weak husband letting his wife get out of control and now and she has corrupted other people's lives may God help the children and has destroyed his life and it's, it's very fitting that we read the tragic story of Jezebel this morning in the Old Testament Jehu didn't play Jehu said, throw her out the window. Don't let her go down the stairs. Throw her out the window, and the eunuchs took and threw out the window. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just telling you all, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there are some bad, evil women who are out of control. And oftentimes we have Ahab-like husbands who are weak, who let them get out of control and, and let them do ungodly wickedness that destroys the lives of their children, the lives of other young people, and his life eventually. And if some of this uh, other stuff is true and more uh, things drop along these lines, which I believe will happen, I don't see how Jerry Falwell Jr. will not uh, split from her. But if he let her do it and encouraged it, then he shouldn't because he's just as guilty. My point in all of this, because this is this is they 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 are they are a proverb now. This is a prime example. And by the way, I've told you, this is the tip of the iceberg. If they're doing it at the largest Christian university in the world, I've been preaching to you and telling you there are pastors and pastors' wives who've been doing the same thing. They have their own Ashley Madison pastors swapping wives, pastors going both ways on the down low. I know you don't want to hear it, but it is true. Pastors' wives going bo both ways. They have these assistants, and all they are are sex assistants. That's all they are. Okay, so next, we talked about the husband and the wife. See that she reverence her husband. There is no way you can have sex with a man in front of your husband and respect your husband. That's a lie out of hell. You a lie. Your feet ain't made, and your heart pumps peanut butter. No, no. I'm 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 respecting my husband and submitting. Uh, no, no, you you're ruling very strong over your husband to get him to let you do that. And you're not respecting your husband at all. You can care less about your husband. You're disrespecting your husband. You're not showing any reverence whatsoever. If you have the mind and the uh, gall to have sex with another man in front of your husband while he's sitting over there drunk and giggling, I'm just, that's what the report says.
with proof that something was going on and with an admission from her that she did it. And I, I, this is not about them. It's about you because y- you're the berg. You're the iceberg. They just the tip. This has been going on for a long time. That's why your church is in the coronavirus plague and people are dying in your church. You're not going to hear about it from some of the popular and well-known churches, but I know for a fact many people are dying from the church pews. Many pastors are dying. We're getting ready to pray for a, a number of pastors, their families rather, they have died. I think two of the families, the husband, the pastor, and the wife died. What? 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 This is why I say, don't you go to the church building. Go to church. I'm not here to preach. I don't feel like preaching. Go to church, but don't go to the church building. Because you may catch your death. That's just not wise. Okay, people, right now, it's just not wise. Um, it may come back. One, it, listen to me. It may come back. It may not. This may be with us for a very long time because God is not playing for you to push God to this point. The thing about God is once he gets to this point, <laughs> he's going to finish what he's going to do now. Uh, uh, unless you humble yourself and repent and turn from your wicked ways and seek his face and get back to Jesus, your first love, in a hurry, right quick in a hurry. This is going to be a long time. <laughs> Cause see, he does not do that, man. He, he's not playing. If you don't hurry up and show some true repentance... And some true humility. This could last five years. As Elijah, as Elisha predicted, Elijah, and I'm doing the same thing Elisha did. He told a woman where he, woman who, son, who he raised from the dead. Let me tell you something. God is going to send a famine. Now, you need to go find your place where you can shelter in place and, 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 and chill uh, for a while. You're going to have to leave here. You're going to have to go someplace else. Because there's a famine in coming for seven years. This may last seven years. And, 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 and I'm telling thousands of people, you need to move. I, I didn't even, we read that, we read that this morning. This may last a long time because you know why? We're, 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 not, we're, we're, we're not in a mood. We're not in the mood to repent. We're still in the play. Listen to me how, how, how stupid so many of us are in America, especially, because we can't take anything. We can't stay put for a long period. I got to get out and all that kind of foolishness. We want to jam, jam, boogie, boogie, and let the good times roll in the doggone plague. Man, are you kidding me? We want to party in the plague. Actually, Usain Bolt want to party hard and jam, jam, boogie, boogie, no mask, no protection, hugging and kissing everybody. And now he's recovering from the coronavirus plague, and he's the fastest man on earth. So you know he's got to be healthy. If the plague can catch up with him, the plague is going to completely destroy your fat self. Don't you get mad with me. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray. I'm just preaching a little bit. We want to party in the plague. Mm -hmm. Men and women. Committing fornication with a mask on. 
But that ought to tell you something. With the mask being on your face, that ought to tell you something. Kissing, trying to kiss somebody with a mask on, wanting to hook up so badly, you devil. You're going to do it with a mask on. Coming to the boat people. Can you, can, you, can you imagine boat people coming to the house with a mask on? And still we got a mask on too? They still going to commit adultery. They still going to commit fornication. Saying crazy thing, well, you know, that part of the body does not have coronavirus. <laughs> Can't get it. That's ridiculous. So wives, show reverence to your husband. Husbands, love your wives. It's a choice. Maybe the thrill is gone. But see, mature, godly, uh, stand-up guys and girls, they do what's right whether they feel like it or not. Same thing with young people. I just thought I'd preach a little bit. I mean, God just let me, let me, let me. I didn't. I didn't intend to preach. I thought I'd preach a little bit because that's that's what some of y'all you want to hear some preaching. I know that. When right now you need to do some humbling down, praying, seeking God's face, turning from your wicked ways, repenting. And getting back to Jesus, your first love. In fact, I believe the last thing you need is another sermon. Unless it's telling you to repent. Why do I say that? Because you have not obeyed the 10,001 sermons you've already heard. You need to go back and listen to them and obey them. Listen to those sermons. Our devotional passage today is Psalm 65, verses 6 through 13, which by his strength setteth fast the mountains, being girded with power, which stilleth the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. They also that dwell in the uttermost parts are afraid at thy tokens. Thou makest the outgoings of the morning and evening to rejoice. Thou visitest the earth and waterest it. Thou greatly enrichest it with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou preparest them corn when thou hast to provide when thou hast so provided for it. Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settlest the furrows thereof. Thou makest it soft with showers. Thou blessest the springing thereof. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered over with corn. They shout for joy. They also sing. Dr. Matthew Henry wrote in his commentary regarding this passage that almighty strength which sets fast the mountains is that which upholds the believer. I want you to get this now. That word which steals the stormy ocean and speaks it into a calm can silence our enemies. Never forget that now. How contrary soever light and darkness are to each other, it is hard to say which is most welcome. Does the watchman wait for the, the morning? So does the laborer earnestly desire the shades of evening? How much the fruitfulness of this lower part of the creation depends upon the influence of the upper is easy to observe. Every good and perfect gift is from 
above. Never forget that now. He who enriches the earth, which is filled with man's sins, by his abundant and varied bounty, can neither want power nor will to feed the souls of his people. Temporal mercies to us unworthy creatures shadow forth more important blessings. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, let's pray for everybody as we should, based upon First Timothy chapter 1, uh, First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority. that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Join us in prayer. Holy Father God in heaven, we pray for all of your saints, those who believe in you. Help us to humble ourselves. Help us to pray. Help us to seek your face. And help us to turn from our wicked ways. And help us to get back to you, our first love. And our first works. And Holy Father God, uh, we praise you and we thank you for providing for us down through the years. And we humbly pray that you would continue to bless us with salvation, spiritual, family life, protection and provision. Uh, financial and material blessings, even in the plague, as you have done. We pray, Holy Father God, that you would heal those who are sick. And, Lord, we pray for Christians to call for the elders of the church, to call them, to pray with them, to be honest about their sins, to be transparent so that you can heal them and raise them up. We pray for the salvation and healing of those who don't know you as Savior. And Holy Father God, we pray for all people in government, for they're your ministers as well. We pray for the salvation, spiritual, family life, financial, material protection, and uh, provision for all of your government servants. The president and all of his administration, all governors, mayors, police officers, and sheriffs and their workers and officers. We pray for all prime ministers, presidents, potentates, and premiers, we pray these blessings upon them, and we pray that you will lead God and direct them in the way that you want them to go in leading uh, their respective areas. And Holy Father God, we pray for the salvation of those who don't know your Savior in this world, in this country, around the globe, and in the media. We pray for the revival of... your saints in this country, around the globe, and in the media as well. We pray that these world leaders would lead their respective areas in the way that you see fit. We pray for uh, the peace of Jerusalem and for the protection of Israel. We pray for all Christian uh, martyrs, uh, those who are being persecuted, uh, in China, in Nigeria, we pray for the families of the martyrs, that you would comfort them as only you can. And Lord, protect these who are being persecuted around the world. And provide for them and bless them and deliver them and give them grace while they go through this. 
And Holy Father God, we pray now for all of the people in the millions around the world who have lost family members to the tragic coronavirus plague death. And we pray that you would uh, heal their hearts and comfort them uh, at this time. We pray for your Holy Ghost to draw them to yourself, Lord Jesus, for salvation and comfort. And draw them to your Holy Scriptures for salvation and comfort by your divine power. Help them to hear the gospel, see the gospel, understand the gospel according to the scriptures, and be saved today. And now, Lord, we pray for some by name, for there are many, many thousands, even in this country, uh, and the numbers are not accurate given to us by the news, no doubt, that is over half a million people who have died in America alone, no doubt. Lord, you know exactly the number. We pray for all of these families who are strangely not being noticed, not being recognized, not being shown any love, respect, or compassion, hardly, from a country that normally does that kind of thing very well. And so we pray for them, and we only pray for a few by name, but we pray for all of the rest as well. We pray for the family and friends of Georgia church member Linda Lewis. We pray for the family and friends of Georgia church member Sarah Nell Rooks. We pray for the family and friends of Georgia church member Velma Underwood. We pray for the family and friends of Georgia church member Thomas Underwood. Another family with multiple family members lost. lost. We pray for the family and friends of Virginia Pastor Mark Price. We pray for the family and friends of Mississippi Pastor Alan Stevens. We pray this same prayer for the family and friends of Nicaraguan Pastor Ovidio Valadares. We pray for the family and friends of Nicaraguan Pastor Johnny Jimenez. And we pray for the family and friends of Texas Pastor Jeff Sanders. We pray for the family and friends of Texas uh, pastor's wife, Valerie Sanders. We commit all of these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and in ours as well. Comfort these people as only you can, for we have no words. And then, Holy Father God, we pray for all of the people who have sent in prayer requests. Hear and answer their prayers and hear and answer our prayers for them. And we pray, Lord, for salvation, spiritual, family life, provision and uh, protection, uh, f financial and material blessings upon all of the people. And at the same time, answer their specific prayers as we pray for a few. We pray for Rose, for you to deliver her son from all evil forces and heal him from all pain in his right hip and leg. Protect the family from the coronavirus plague. We pray for Vicki. Please heal Haley from all cancer in her body and give her strength. We pray for adoption. Please provide for the orphans and widows during the coronavirus food crisis. We pray for Linda for total healing for anything for her brother to be completely delivered from alcohol and grief over the murder of his only son, for her daughter to come back to you. We pray for Teresa, for her daughter and oldest son to recover from the death of their brother, for Teresa to stay strong as well. We pray for Lillian, for your blessings to be upon her writing and publishing efforts. We pray for Linda and Wade for her prodigal son to return to you and come home. Protect them from the coronavirus plague. That is her, her husband to return to you and to come home and help her to be the wife you want her to be. We pray for Marie for protection and favor to be over her situation, for doors to open, for resources. 
support and provision for medical and dental care. We pray that you would protect them from the coronavirus plague. We pray for Naeem for safety as he begins full-time ministry in Pakistan. We pray for Virginia, for her nephew to be released from prison, for her husband to stay employed, for her to become debt-free. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all of the people who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ through the preaching of the gospel and who have written in our Lord uh, through this ministry and all who have rededicated their lives even though we don't give that kind of invitation we thank you for them letting us know that they have come back to you help these people all of them not only the ones listed here today, but all who are not listed to grow in the faith and to stand strong in the faith. We pray for Jay. We pray for Cairo. We pray for Carrie. We pray for Keith. We pray for Thomas. We pray for Eric. And we pray for In. And we also pray, Lord, for Lola, Nathan, uh, George, uh, Amagella. Dominique, Anne, and Jaya. We commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and help them to grow and to stand firm in the faith no matter what. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Dr. A.W. Tozer talks about remembering the forgotten. He said gospel churches, which mostly begin with the lowly, are usually not content till they attain some degree of wealth and social acceptance. And I want you to understand this, and I want you to hear this. Then they gradually fall into classes determined largely by the wealth and education of the members because this has happened to many of the churches that are closing here soon. In fact, uh, Bonner has done some research and said because of the coronavirus plague, many churches are going to close here shortly. Many have already, permanently. The individuals that comprise the top layer of these various classes go on to become pillars of the religious society and are soon entrenched in places of leadership and influence. It is then that their great temptation comes upon them. The temptation to cater to their own class and to neglect the poor and the ignorant and make up the swarming, that make up the swarming population around them. They soon become hardened to every appeal of the Holy Spirit toward meekness and humility. Their homes are spotless, their clothes the most expensive, their friends the most exclusive. Apart from some tremendous moral upheaval, they are beyond help, and yet they may be among the most vocal exponents of Bible Christianity and heavy give us to the cause of the church. Let us not become indignant at this blunt portrayal of facts. Let us rather humble ourselves to serve God's poor. Let us seek to be like Jesus in our devotion to the forgotten of the earth and even of the church who have nothing to recommend them but their poverty and their heart hunger and their tears. Shall we pray? Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for these two services, the standing between the living and the dead service number one and the standing between the living and the dead service number two, back to back. And we pray and we give you the glory the praise and the honor for what you have done in our midst and uh, during this time. Help us 
to uh, take heed to what we have heard. Help us to remember the prayers and help us to pray without ceasing if we name the name of Christ. And most of all, Holy Father God, we pray that you will, you will save those who are lost by the power of your gospel, by the power of your grace, by the power of your Holy Spirit, even now. Lord, that every person under the sound of my voice may come to know you as Savior before it is eternally too late. In Jesus Christ's name, I do pray. And for his sake, amen. Now, dear friend, if you are with us today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in the free pardon of your sins, allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him for your soul's salvation from the power of sin and from that awful place of punishment of sin, hell, forever. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have failed God. From the Pope on down, we all have done evil against God. We all have broken his Ten Commandments, such as lying, dishonesty, stealing, regardless of the uh, value of what it was that you stole. Lust, covetous, covetousness in your heart towards people and things. Have you ever done these things before? Even if you stole a cookie out of the cookie jar, you've broken God's Ten Commandments. You say, oh, that's so innocent. Not in God's sight. That's just you talking, that foolishness. Have you ever dishonored, disobeyed, and disrespected your parents? Have you ever talked back? Have you ever displayed a bad attitude? You've, you've committed this sin. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? Using God's name in a lie when you know you're lying, but then you say, I swear to God. That's taking God's name in vain. And on top of that, you're lying on him. Because you're saying that he's a witness to the evil that you say you did not do, but you did. And, 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 and people go to hell for that if they don't repent and trust Christ as Savior. So secondly, accept the fact that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin all day long. The Holy Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. This means that your body, if you don't trust Christ as Savior, will die one day, and you will go to that, your body will go to a grave, and your soul will go to hell if you have not trusted Christ as Savior. And hell is a very real place. Jesus Christ preached on hell more than anybody in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Why? One reason why is because he knew more about hell than everybody else. Because he created hell for the devil and his angels. However, if you act like the devil and disobey like the devil and don't trust, don't trust Christ as Savior, you will go to hell with the devil because of your sins and your unbelief in Christ. You're rejecting Christ. One time when Jesus Christ described hell in one of his sermons, he said, Hell is a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. 
He said, hell is a place where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth because of the pain. Have you ever seen anybody in pain and they grit their teeth? So hell is a very real place. Thirdly, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are on the road to hell. You're on the road to hell right now if you have never trusted Christ. Jesus Christ is your Savior. And you need to get off of that road. And you can only do that by believing in Christ. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off. And cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt, or maim. It's better for you to go to heaven. If your foot takes you to places that cause you to sin, if your hand leads you to touch people you're not supposed to be touching and causes you to sin, to go to hell, it's better for you to cut off your hand and cut off your foot and go to heaven in a wheelchair than to go to hell with both feet and both hands. Rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire, because that's where you're going if you don't repent and trust Christ Jesus as Savior today. Hell is a very real place. Hell is bad news, my dear friend, but I have some good news for you. If a 43-year-old millionaire known around the world can die, you can die. You're no better than he is. Chadwick, Chadwick Bowman died, Bozeman died yesterday. 43 years old. That's a young man. A superhero in the eyes of many. But he's dead. And if he can die, you can die. And you will die. And once you die, the Bible says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You will meet God one day and be judged for your sins and your rejection of Jesus Christ. So hell is very bad news, but I have some very good news for you. You don't have to go to hell to spend eternity. You can go to heaven, even though you are a sinner. For Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That means that God loves you. Are you in the world? Then God loves you. That he gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world. He gave up his only child for you and for me. It's one thing to give up one child. That's bad enough. But to give up your only child for some wicked, evil, sinful people like we are. Now that's love for you. You will never see a greater love than that. Now, and now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with my son that I gave up. Here's all you need to do. That whosoever, the word whosoever means anybody at any time in history. Red, yellow, black, and white. No racism here. That whosoever believeth in him. The word believeth means to have faith in, to trust in. That's it, in your heart. You, see, the word believeth means you don't have to do anything. Just believe in your heart. Just believe. In him, Jesus said, he was talking about himself. In order to be saved from hell, you just need to believe in Jesus. That's the good news. Not go to church, believe in Jesus. Not get baptized, believe in Jesus. Not sing in the choir, believe in Jesus. 
not help old ladies across the street believe in Jesus, not give a whole lot of money to the church, believe in Jesus, believe in him, believe in me is, is what Jesus is telling you. That's it. Not church membership. Believe in me. Not baptism. Believe in me. And if you believe in me, the passage says in verse uh, chapter 3, verse 16. If you believe in me, you should not perish. That means you will not go to hell. But have everlasting life in heaven. Jesus Christ died for your sins. He suffered, he bled, and he died for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day. And all you have to do is simply believe in him. You got that? That's it. You get your eternal life insurance policy paid for in full by simply believing in Jesus Christ, not trying to do something yourself. You say, preacher, I, I'm, I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ, but I want to get my life straightened out first before I come, uh, you know, to Jesus Christ. Because, you know, when I come, I don't want to be playing. I don't want to be half-stepping. You know, I don't want to be like some of these hypocrites out here, you know, how they are and so forth. And say, uh, yeah, uh, here's the problem, though. You're going to be dead and in hell before you do that. Because you're not going to get yourself together. You must believe in Christ first. Trust Christ as your Savior first and let him into your life and then he'll help you get your act together. So believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shall be saved. Then pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul. Call on his name to save you for the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou, you, shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's it. You don't see church membership there. You don't see the doors of the church open. They always open. Even without a building, they open. You don't need a building to get saved. You don't need to be at church to be to get saved. Many, many thousands of folk got saved outside of the church and in spite of the church. I'm one of them. Raised in the church all of my life. One of the main things I remember in my childhood from the time I was a little boy until 19 years old is the church. We were in church every week. My dad was a preacher. My mother was a preacher. But I was lost and on my way to hell. It wasn't until I went into the Air Force out on my own when somebody came to me and showed me what I just told you. And that's how I got saved December the 19th, 1979. In a, in a dorm room, in an Air Force dorm room, room 316. So you don't have to be in a church building to be say, well, I'm going to wait till we can go back to church. Then I'm going to get saved then. I'm going to, no, no. You need to get saved right now. You may never see a church building again. So believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and call on his name in prayer. I will help you with the prayer. It is called the sinner's prayer. Millions of people have prayed a similar prayer. Just repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Believing in Christ Jesus. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father God. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have committed those sins. That the preacher talked about. And so therefore I have broken your. Ten commandments. even though uh, I may not have broken all of them, I broke some of them, and according to your word, if I just break one, I break all of them. And 
so, Holy Father God, I am guilty of crimes against you. And I deserve to go to hell just like a criminal deserves to go to jail. <clears throat> and I realize that. Holy Father God, for Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who suffered and who bled and died on the cross for my sins. was buried and rose on the third day by your power. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul today. For I believe in you and I receive you as my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and present. And help me to turn away from my evil life. And to follow you, Lord Jesus, in the new life. For it is in your holy name we do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. Allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you to help you to grow in the faith and be the Christians that uh, God wants you to be. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer. Let's all stand for our closing prayer by the grace of God. If the Lord tarries is coming and we live, we'll be here tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, and 8 o'clock Pacific. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for all of it is due your holy name. And Holy Father God, we pray that you'll, you will help us to not take what we heard today for granted. Help us to take heed to your holy word and help us to pray without ceasing throughout the remainder.